This is a clip taken from David So's podcast. And David So's an interesting character, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, he was somebody who I thought I remember seeing quite early on the podcasting scene, but I never really listened to their comedy too tough because it was mostly... Again, this is going to be mad to sound this, but it kind of come across like dorky comedy. Like they were like the dorky crew kids and I didn't really vibe with it. And also they reminded me too much of like Asian kids I went to sixth form with, especially Filipino guys who were always dancing. You know what I mean? Like they just got on my nerves. They would always be like pop looking in the flipping, in the corridors and shit. And just, just annoying. Do you know what I mean? I always had problems with them. I always used to fight them when we played football and basketball and stuff. I just had a real issue. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't not like Filipino people. Don't get me wrong. But it's just the certain type of Filipino people that are really into sneakers and like to dance too much. Just gets on my nerves. I just hate all that shit. I hate people that show too much joy. Simmer down. Relax your joy. Don't be so happy around me, especially. So that's why I didn't vibe with the show. But he's also really funny. And he's really good at podcasting. And I remember... When he went on the fire and a kid once when they were going through what they were going through with Brian Cannon was off and obviously Malik was on there. He, for whatever reason, had an idea who Brendan was and was going hard at him in terms of asking him questions about the fire and the kid subreddit, the trolls, how his comedy special on Showtime was received. And I was like, whoa, guy, like he came out of nowhere. Like just, he was going at him. It was probably one of the better episodes because even though I thought Brendan came across pretty badly, I still think he dealt with the questions pretty well without being given notice. Like, it was obviously something that happened out of the blue and he kind of got, I won't say ambushed, but like, he wasn't given a warning that he was going to ask these questions. I don't think he was anyway. And I think he dealt with them pretty well, especially considering how thin-skinned Brendan is. I thought he dealt with the questions okay. 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 But, since the Bobby Lee drama's happened, David clearly has changed his tone on Brendan. Um, <laughs> and what's been going on because he would go, he went in on him on his podcast. There's a couple of clips here from the Friday Kids I'm going to play through. It's giving you an idea on what he thinks of the whole situation. So, this is David So talking with some of his um, podcasting co hosts about the whole thing. Excuse me, I don't know what the guy's names are. I didn't research it too much. I apologize, but let's play the clip anyway. Time that he was with yeah. his other lady. Sure. Which already is yeah. fucking foul as shit. That, honestly, that's the first and last strike for me, bro. Yeah. Right? It's like you. He first strike about... was his first stand up special. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Oh, I'm like... kidding, Brendan. I don't. Don't fight me. <laughs> nah, bro. But it's like, you know, if that's your homie's girl mm -hmm. and you slide in her DMs, like, what are you doing? We got beef. Yeah. W what are you weird. doing, dude? That's forever beef. That's the one thing that I don't get. Again, sorry, stop it again. That's the one thing that I don't get. How. That's the one thing I don't understand. How, for whatever reason. But again, just give credit to. Give, let's give credit to Brendan and Brian. That is master levels of manipulation and distraction tactics to get everyone to start talking about something that has nothing to do with what's at the heart of the issue. The heart of the issue is that you allegedly tried to offer Annie a drug walk. That you, according to Kalila, sit in her DMs on some let's hook up and chill thing when you were with your lady and when she was clearly in a very public relationship with, with Bobby Lee. That's the main issue. Whether they said it laughingly, giggingly, whatever it meant, that's the issue. And if if it was any other guy, if it wasn't Bobby Lee who was not so passive and clearly somebody that doesn't like confrontation, this is beef forever, as that guy mentioned. Every time I see you, it's on site. Every time your name comes up, I am I am dragging you through the mud. This isn't something that you just, oh yeah, my bad, I text you, I called you. No, there's no calling. You don't call my girl, you don't call me. It's on site. All the time. Anyone that's connected to you, I rip them in, in into pieces too. Every chance I get to disparage your name and to put your name through the mud, to discredit you, to, to highlight your wrong, your flipping wrongdoings, to make it known that you're a scumbag, I will do it. But somehow, Brendan and Brian managed to swarm their way out of it with the Reddit thing. Master level manipula manipulators and gaslighters. Master level. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's crazy. I don't know. That's just me. But I don't so know. he was just hitting her up out of nowhere and was like, "Yo, let's like kind of fuck type shit." Don't know the specifics, but essentially that's essentially what it, that's what it was. What it is. Oh, okay. So and this is somebody that he says here's here's the thing that I really really dislike probably about Brendan, not from a personal experience, but what this kind of shows about uh, his character as a human being is that I dislike people who say the word "that's my brother," "that's my friend," and they're not. Stop saying that shit. Stop saying to people. He says it consistently because I watched the fighter and the kid. That's my brother, man. He's like a brother to me. Brendan, shut the fuck up. 
No, but to be fair to him, though, it's an LA thing. And I hate it, too. The same way that I hate when people say, um, yeah, that, that's my bro, that's my guy, my broski, my brother from day dot, brother from another mother. What's something that I hate people say? Oh, well, you know, I, I think I hate people say, when you hear people say, oh, I'm so proud, I'm so proud, I'm so proud. Especially within my little subculture or within my little social circle, my niche, my scene of people who are maybe within the creative class and hipsters, whatever they may be. I have a lot of people that say that. And it's really, it irks me because it always happens to be they're proud of somebody who has got a really cool job on paper. They work for Adidas. They work for Nike. They work for Apple. They work for some big trendy magazine. Um, they're at some creative agency that everyone loves and wants to work at. It's never somebody just working a normal job who got promoted to be the manager of a Tesco's. Oh, I'm proud of my friend for going from working as a weekend sales assistant to now he's the area manager of Tesco's or, my, or now maybe he's a shift leader of this store. No, it's always cool jobs I'm proud of. It's never just normal things. Oh, I'm so proud. My friend got featured on this Academy Award winning show. My friend got an award for styling this thing. Of course you're proud because it's something that you can show off that makes you look good too by proxy. Because if you show them, if you show a picture of your friend styling Skepta, it makes you look better, doesn't it? Because obviously, people then start to put the two and two together and start thinking, oh, you must be friends with them too. No, that's not true. No. No. God damn it, man. Be, fr be proud of all your friends. Be proud of your family. Be proud of your colleagues for graduating school and all that sort of stuff. Be proud of them too. Not just your cool friends. But again, it's a whole thing about friends. They also talk about friends the same way. That's my friend. That's my brother. Bro, do you treat your brothers and friends like that? Do you sign your friends' DMs to try to hook up with their wives? Do you? If you do, chuck yourself off a bridge. He is not your friend. He is a work acquaintance that you guys have good jokes with. They say good things about you. That doesn't mean that they're in your fucking circle. What are you, fucking 13 years old? Are you fucking dumb? <laughs> you, you don't know what friends are yet? <laughs> yeah, you exactly. have no fucking real friends. And if that's the case, that's your bad. Another thing people have pointed out again in the subreddit, which I don't think is fair, but something I want to highlight. I do remember ages ago, someone saying um, one of the other things that might be a bit of a red flag for Brendan as a person is the fact that he doesn't seem to have any friends around him from the, what's he, where is he from? Aurora, Colorado, right? Or wherever he's from, right? You don't really see many of those friends around him now that he's in LA. Even coming on the show, him talking about stories about them in the past. It's always just LA, LA, to the point that he's got tattoos on his body with LA. It's a bit weird, but it's all just LA stuff. It's all just new friends. You don't get any semblance of like who he was prior to stand up. You get obviously a semblance to him in MMA and UFC circles, but no real connection to like his college years and all that sort of stuff or working in that area. It's all just new friends. And people would say, and I know it's a thing <clears throat> with women, <clears throat> women always say that if you'd meet a guy who doesn't have any friends, like old school friends, it's usually a red flag. And it might be a red flag with him, a little bit. But the other thing, only reason why I say it may not be a red flag is I think he's not alone in this. I think this is a standard thing in LA. I think when people go to LA, similar to when you move to any other new place as an adult, you basically go there to try and reinvent yourself. And especially in the entertainment industry, the heart of the entertainment industry, which is Hollywood and LA, you would obviously try and go there to, with the ability, with the with the idea that you're going to try and find your new tribe. You're going to try and engross yourself um, in this new community and find new people that maybe match your career, um, your career hopes and, and dreams and whatever it may be. So the whole friend thing is a weird thing. But I still think it's something to note in your head. Like you don't ever hear Brendan talk about his old friends. You don't hear his, his old friends be around him. It's always these new people out of nowhere, these comedy people who, again, aren't really his friends either because they're only using him because he's famous and he's got a popular podcast and he's friends with Joe Rogan. So it's a bit weird. Yeah. You've surrounded around you surrounded yourself around people who like to throw these words out. That's my brother. That's my mm. friend. That's my boy. So many people in this fucking city say that shit so often. It's just glued to their fucking lying lips. Brendan, Bobby Lee is not your friend. He was never your friend. You guys were cool with each other. Those are two fucking big differences. Yeah. And those guys say those words so often. And so, and the, the idea behind that, the reason why that kind of annoys me is that. For you to go on the podcast, right, which is cool. That's fine. You're trying to bury the hatchet or you're trying to, you know, save skin right now mm -hmm. because he's honestly on the back foot like Lila was saying, is that you're saying that this is my brother. How would – this is how you treat your family? That's the crazy part. Right? What, yeah. is this, what is this definition of friendship and brotherhood that you keep fucking saying? Stop saying that shit. Yeah, but it's LA again. You need to relax. It's LA thing in the standard. <clears throat> 
Anyway, move along. Another clip here. Brennan's nightmare. People checking the comments on his special live on air. Thankfully, his team deleted all the negative ones. Oh, yeah. True, 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 true. That's another really weird faux pas. Why would you delete the comments on a podcast that's on a special that's clearly generating some level of flipping? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, let's let's play the thing. Part about his special was the comment section. <laughs> Hilarious. Dude. People were roasting him? People were roasting. And I understand why he doesn't read comments because I would kill myself. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. What were they saying? Bro, people are like crazy. They are about Open up your phone and even just go to the comments e- Look, look, even if you do something perfect, say you made something perfect, mm-hmm. the people internet gonna is still going to shit on it. So I was ty- I, on YouTube because I, I was looking for this whole debacle shit. Mm-hmm. I typed in Brendan Schaub and it was like terrible comedy, not funny. Like, those are all, <laughs> Bro, like people have like, hit, people like dedicate YouTube channels of just like, Doing hit jobs. Yeah, that's that's so unnecessary. Like that is unnecessary. Or you are trying to attack him for being a bad comment. Like, like take it easy. The man. first yeah. comment. The first comment is uh says this is brutal from Sad Frog. What yeah, you, some people are saying yeah, uh, they all jokes aside, huge pro- huge improvement from his previous special. Good that's job. positive. I like that yeah, positivity. On no, no, no. Hold on a second. Like Literally three days ago, these comments were not this. <laughs> yeah, so they deleted a lot. Of them. <laughs> Maybe they might have. YouTube uh, might have gone through there and like a bot uh, or something. They deleted every bad comment. There's no bad comment on you. Wow, not a, <laughs> there's not a single bad comment on. They deleted all the bad comments. Some people, some said this isn't that bad. Write a comment saying we're filming a podcast right now. Oh, I should have. Sw- I literally was cackling my ass off, <laughs> laughing at some terrible. of these comments. Oh, so some of them got deleted, huh? Damn, bro. Some of them, all of them got deleted. All the negative comments got deleted. It doesn't make sense, in it. Why would you do that, really? Why would you do that? Because the engagement is the engagement. Whether they're saying bad things or good things about you, upvotes or downvotes, they're still checking you out. Especially if you own the content too, you can copyright strike anything that people try and re-upload in terms of the full episode. You still got your rights to like, why would you delete the comments? Just leave the let 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 them run. Because I always I always thought my understanding behind it, again, maybe I'm I'm redacted. I was under the impression the reason why he went to do it on YouTube in the first place was so he had metrics and he had numbers that he could use to then give himself a better bargaining chip if he wanted to go get more ads or he wanted to book bigger shows or he wanted to get bigger sponsors. Like, I, I always thought it was like a money business type thing. Like, let's put this on YouTube. Let's show people, like, what I can actually do in numbers because I'm sure he knew the reaction would it to it would be, like, 50-50. Some would like it, some would hate it. But the fact that it would have numbers anyway would be good because now it's, it's like, like a million views. It doesn't matter what, whether you like it or not. People, brands and marketing teams and stuff, they just see a million views and they see a million possible customers who can buy their products or service. So it's a good thing, regardless. So then why why bury the views? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Oh, sorry, 7 a.m. in Winnipeg. 7 a.m. in Winnipeg sounds like a really bad Jack Harlow song, isn't it? <laughs> a bad imitation of a Drake song. 7 a.m. in Winnipeg. <laughs> I'm just out here trying to get pegged. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? That sounds like a really bad one. Wow. Wow. Some of them were pretty There's fucking 5,000 comments on there, too. It's all like, it, it, David's got emails. It's like, all your fucking comments have been deleted and removed. Oh, yeah. He's like, God damn it. God damn it, dude. A thousand notifications. Damn, they deleted. But that, what that kind of sucks? Man. Because the comments were hilarious. <laughs> I'm so sad. Yeah, no, they like, were. It's not that, like I said, I'm not reveling in the fact that he's getting roasted. I'm saying that some of these comments, like these comments were, were funny. genius. Yeah, Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, that write jokes like, in there. Look, Crazy. look, if it, it, I get it. It's mean, but like, if it's funny, it has value. So yeah. let it, let it live, baby. Let it live. All comments should be let live. I don't, I'm not a believer in deleting any comments. I think deleting any comments is some loser, sucker ass, sensitive, dumb stuff. Like, you're on the internet. You're going to get bad. You're going to get good comments. Let them rock. It is what it is. But maybe because I've been on the internet for the majority of my life, right? I've been I've been on forums. I've been on chat rooms. I've been on chat clients. I've done the entire thing. So I'm used to how vicious people can be on the internet. It just is what it is. If you ever see them in real life and you're on that time and you want to throw hands, throw their hands. But for the most part, who cares? It doesn't really matter for the most part. It really, really doesn't matter. But for some people, they really get annoyed by it and it really kind of tickles them and it kind of makes them really upset and stuff. But anyway, we continue with the David, David So clips. One more. He was talking about, for Brendan, he goes, I'm okay, you know, I'm a comic, I'm an entertainer. You could make fun of me, talk about me being a, sta- a bad stand-up, whatever, right? But when you go, you know, after me personally and my family and this stuff is toxic, 
how funny. He did the same thing to Ariel Hawani. <laughs> exactly. How funny, Brendan, that you literally said on your podcast, I heard through hearsay, which apparently you're really good at just regurgitating stuff, stuff through hearsay, that Ariel Hawani is a bad uh, fucking co-host and a terrible person to work with and networks hate. Uh-huh. And you're going after his fucking money and now his family. You did the same thing. Uh-huh. What are you talking about? Yeah. What is this nonsense? He was talking about... Because it's a double standard. Welcome to LA, home of the double standard. Da, 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 da. No, it's double standards, of course, isn't it? Double standards. It's like him saying, that's not nice. That's not nice. Is that nice? Is that nice? To Kalila and stuff. It's like, is that nice? Is it nice what you've done? Perpetuating this lie that we're the masterminds behind a, a flipping T5K subreddit. Calling all your friends and telling them all bad stuff about me. Telling BGL to threaten me that you're going to expose me for hooking up with other dudes and stuff. Like, is that fun? Come on. Is that nice? Yo, big up the super chat. Big up Rick Rock. Morning for all the cats in the chat. Big up the homeless cat community. I don't know what 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 the sign is for us. If it's meow, I, I don't want to do the I don't want to do the meow thing because that's gonna be especially with Asians on the screen. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get cancelled. I'm not gonna do that. Anyway, you know what I mean. Big up everyone in the chat. Big up the homeless cat community. Let's rock. Let's do this thing. But yeah, the double standards is what it is. Um, again, like I said previously. The fact that Brennan and Brian were able to change the narrative on this entire debacle and make it out to be Bobby's beliefs behind the flipping Final Kids subreddit is genius. Genius level of distraction. Genius level of, um, what's that thing called? Uh, what's that thing called when you distract people? I don't know what thing called. You, you know what I mean. Let's continue. I, I can't bother to find words to say stuff. Who cares about words? Who cares about words? And if you want to know the difference between this... And um, this disappearance from, oh, sorry, David So talking to Brendan on his show, vis-a-vis -vis him talking about him on his own show. Look at this. It really just comes to the territory. And I, I no tell these guys all the time, dude, social media is not real, man. It's not the real world. People have polarizing comments on there and they're trying to get attention. So they're posting the most wild shit. I see any of those people in the street. Oh, let me get a picture, man. Is is that notion right that social media isn't real? I don't believe so. I think it is real, but you just don't have to you don't have to subscribe to it, as Brenda would say. It is still real though, it's still valid. People what they say on social media is actually valid, is actually real, and to some extent does represent some people's feelings on what you do. But overall, I think most people, with maybe the the only exception I can think of, the only exception I can think of is probably Somewhere like a dark side feel. I can't think of any other content creator in the world who has more haters than fans. You always have more fans, but human nature is always going to make you pay more attention to the negative than the positive. It just is what it is. You're going to be more intrigued to find out why someone doesn't like you as opposed to finding out why they do like you. But the only person who I can, who I can think of is legitimately has more haters who dislike him and want him to you know, stop making content and can't wait to the time where he gets deleted from YouTube and stuff is maybe a, um, what's his face? A dark side feel. Everyone else has more fans. Even Brendan Schaub, he has more fans than he has haters. 100%. So him saying it's not real isn't true because it is real. It's just that you don't need to pay attention to it. You know what I mean? That's what I'm basically trying to say. But in his head to make himself feel well and to not make himself cry and stuff, you have to make up this whole thing about, oh, they're not real, they're not real. It's like they are real, just don't pay attention to them. It's not that big of a deal. You're still getting booked. You're still, you know, living a good life. It is what it is. Man, oh, let me do this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm the Thick Boy merch. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, I sell out every time and you have it on. Mm -hmm. Went from, from finding the stand-up. I mean, I don't even know how that happens. <laughs> like, how do you go from like... Because <laughs> of po podcasts. Oh, oh well, okay. I've always wanted to do stand-up. And my way into it was Lies. Talent getting the, and then doing po of comedy podcasts. Mm -hmm. So me and Brian would do live firing the kids, but it wasn't a live podcast. Suck, dude. Brian's doing it now, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a lot of pressure? I mean, even for all you guys, like, for example, because uh, you've been put on by Joe Rogan and a lot of these great comics, right? Yeah. And like I said, like, I, I know of your work. I know what you do. I know what people say. Yeah. So is there a lot of pressure for for you to do better than what people expect out of you because a lot of people feel that you've been kind of put on a platform because a lot of people have pushed you up there mm -hmm. to be at a certain place. Because I feel like that's a lot of pressure, right? I, I don't feel the pressure. I feel like uh, 
So Rogan, Delia, Brian, Theo, uh, Joey, Santino, Bobby Lee, you can go through the entire list. Cummings, the entire list of these monster comics. They're not going to co-sign if I wasn't funny. Mm, that's demonstrably not true. Demonstrably not true. Demonstrably not true. But hey. I'm not going to sell every show on the road multiple times in multiple cities year after year if I wasn't funny. Yeah. So Demonstrably not true. The whole thing of selling out and your friends putting you on doesn't make sense because for the most part, from what I've seen within the LA comedy scene, or within the comedy in general, especially when it comes to the States, if you're a podcaster, most likely you have your own audience that you play to. Or that, sorry, that you that you do your show to, right? You got your, all your fans, right? They love you. And when you go to perform, you usually play to that audience. It's not like you go and do a random show at the comedy store. You drop in at the Laugh Factory and stuff. You don't usually do that. You usually go and put on your own shows and go perform for your fans. So if you sell out shows performing to your own fans, it's not really like selling out to regular people because they're all people that know you from the podcast. Oh, we like this guy, girl from the podcast. We want to see them live. And you go see them live. That's not really a good barometer to say that you are good at stand-up or that solidifies you as... It, all it does basically is let people know that you have people that watch you once and maybe want to watch you again. But then if you dig into it a little bit, it's then just your own fans. It's not really like regular people who are like just stumbling across you on YouTube and thinking, oh, I want to see this guy perform somewhere. Or or they see you in the lineup and think, oh, I want to I want to see this guy perform. It's not really that. It's just your fans who are like listening to T5K, listen to the end, figure out you're, on, you're doing a show, buy a ticket on your website and then do that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. So again, that, that online chatter is not real, dude. It's not real. It's about what happens on the stage in the crowd. That you we, yeah. Again, ticket sales, podcast views, you know, bank account, that's all real. I can. I love how he never mentions about being funny, too. That's another thing that's always intrigued me about this guy. But it's also good because I think for the most part, most of us judge him too harshly. He's not a stand-up comedian. He's just a podcaster that does stand-up. But he's not a stand-up comedian. And I think he's created his own little niche, which other people are also kind of going behind and doing the same thing as well. I, I forgot who I'm thinking. Of. I think it's um, Cody Coe and the other guy. They're, they're, they're similar. Even though they do stand up in comedy, but people know them most often in their YouTube videos. And they then do shows for their fans doing similar type of comedy that they do on their podcasts. So it's not the same thing as like a stand-up stand-up would do. I don't know if they go and do open mics. I don't really know too much about them in terms of that side of things, but that's what he's created for himself. So, But I always find it funny that you never, rarely, very rarely hear Brendan talk about bits he's working on, premises or what he found funny you know what I mean? or comedy specials that he watched and was obsessed with and he had like a bit of a deep dive on and went down a rabbit hole with. Like It's just always just like booking shows, merch, money, Booking shows, merch, money. It's like, okay, we get it. We get it. My, I can see that in black and white. I don't care about anything else. I feel no pressure. I feel mm -hmm. no pressure. You have a very strong mentality. Mm -hmm. Why do you not, do you not feel that? When, you, you, but you, you would have to. What else am I yeah. going to do? What am I going to do? That's what else true. would you do? That's true. What am I going to listen to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they, if they, but if, but if, they, if they knew what they were doing, they would do it. 100%. Yeah, oh, yeah, his yeah. That's, that's that's a terrible criticism to put on somebody. Just because someone's not doing stand up, they can't criticize your stand up. It's like, all right, all right, all right, all right. But whatever. Oh, his special sucks. Let me see your special. Bam. Oh, you don't have one? No, man. Cause uh, all right, you're out. If you have a special, I'll listen to you. If you're a, a legit comic, torn yeah. comic like I am, if you sell more takes than me, I'll listen to you. So, see how he started that. He started with if you got if you've got, if you're stand up, I listen to you. But then he has all these other criteria. You have to be richer than him. You have to be more in shape than him. You have to drive better cars. You have to tour more, sell more tickets, fuck more chicks, do more truck walks. Come on, bro. Give us a break. How did you feel about the critique about your special then? Like, uh, from Don't see it. Damn, man, you're, man, you got the blinders on, son. Man, I don't see it. You, you're you coming with the questions today. He's saying us. He's saying us. No, I love it. Cause, yeah, but the, as far as. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, as far as special. So it depends. Like, I, I, it depends. Like, I, I, probably too early to do it. <laughs> probably too early. You know, only two years in stamp doing special is crazy. Because for me, too, right? Because I, I, I became a fan. Probably it was the worst decision ever in the history of, of entertainment. Don't get me wrong. In the long term, it probably was good for him because that deal was what basically got him the Showtime deal to do mix to do that not mix mental arts to do um what is it called below the belt 
And that led to other opportunities. And I'm sure that check from Showtime paid for a lot of stuff, right? That paid for a lot of stuff in the T5K universe. I'm sure it did. Salaries, equipment, studios. It went a long way, that check. So that check... And the fact that that check is gone now, you've seen a clear dip in the production quality of the Thick Boy stuff. From the thumbnails to the artwork to the production of the show, the audio, the visuals, it's all gone completely downhill since he started doing the thing on his own. That makes complete sense. But if you actually want to be a stand-up comedian, there is no way you accept to do a stand-up comedy special, especially an hour, on Showtime, under the big lights, on that massive stage, two years in. You can't do that. It's just, it's not going to... Especially if you want to create like a body of work. I, that's what I'll describe it as. I'd, I'd, I'd think stand-up would be like similar to you being an artist and making albums. You don't want to put out your first album too early because it would be terrible and it won't really blend with what you've got with your entire body of work. But you also don't want to wait too long because you want, you want the album to tell a story. Like I started from this point and I'm here and, and I went to there, there, there until I got to here. And there's natural progression that you can see, you know, your influences, your where you were in your life, um, how you went about doing things, all this sort of scene because it kind of get displayed in the album and the comedy special. But doing it two years in is insane. Insane. Especially if you think about the two years in that he did it. It wasn't two years of going to open mics. This was two years of him performing in front of T-Fat K audiences. No wonder he wasn't funny. And he's, again, you're already at a disadvantage starting comedy at mid, you know, mid-30s. your mid That's already really difficult, I would imagine. Especially if you're not somebody that's like naturally funny. It's hard to then start, start something like that straight away in your mid-30s. It can be done, but it's difficult. Then you only do it in front of your own fans. And then you do a comedy special after two years for everyone to see. <sighs> Come on, bro. And look what he's done for him. It's, it's obviously done well, monetarily and career-wise. But in terms of reputation, in terms of how he's regarded around his peers, the damage for that is, like, irreversible, basically, isn't it? Like, especially since um, Gringo Pappy's come out, it's gotten worse and worse for him, really. It's not got any better. I was watching you on the podcast scene, right? Sure. And so when I saw you do the special, I also felt it was a little too early for you. Yeah. You know, so... when but here, here, Here's my question for you, and the haters to say this. What would you do? If every I wouldn't do it. Name, name a show. I wouldn't do it. Special. And That's I, the thing, because he can't get it through his head that some people aren't money motivated. I get the money was good, but they're already making good money on the Fire and the Kid. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't Showtime money, but they're still making money on Fire and the Kid from talking about their dicks and nonsense on the internet. It's a pretty good life. You're still selling out shows. People still like you to a certain extent. It wasn't as hated as he was now. Why do that to yourself? Why? Take the time to marinate and build. And again, the other thing also, think about it. The other caveat to put on this. It's now been revealed after the fact. I think Brian revealed it. All his friends told him not to do it. I don't think the only one that didn't tell him to do it was... Um, the only friend, the only problem, sorry, the only person who didn't tell him not to do it was Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan explained on his podcast in a kind of joking way. The only reason why he didn't tell him to do it was because he felt already bad that he told him to stop stand-up. Sorry, to stop um, doing fucking um, UFC in that whole uh, you'd be surprised conversation. So he didn't want to, he felt extra bad now being the person to tell him you shouldn't do it after two years. So he kind of let him do it. Do you know what I mean? And hope for the best. Whereas Brian Cannon actually did say, hey, it's not a good idea. And you know what Brendan's reply was? Or we know what Brendan thought when, Bre when Brian Cannon said that to him. He thought Brian Cannon was hating because he was now becoming more successful. That he had kind of overtook Brian because he was selling more tickets and stuff. So that's, do you know what I mean? Like, that's the delusion that this guy has. So he's trying to rewrite the narrative. Like, oh, it was a no-brainer. I was doing this for my family. The money was too good. No, 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 no. You did it because you actually thought that you were funny enough to have a special after two years. You thought you were going to break the mold. You were going to be the, like, the trailblazer. Or trailblazer. Trailblazer, whatever it may be. God damn it, I can't talk, man. Have an hour. What would you do? You going to not do it? What are you going to do? And I'm then a pussy, so no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't know me like that, motherfucker. You don't know me like that. I'm big pussy, bro. <laughs> no. and, and, then the, and then that special parlayed into every other thing I do with Showtime, which Got I have you. a multi-year deal with. And then, and then oh, okay. And, and then, then, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So the haters. So it, is, didn't, it didn't hurt you. So it's yeah. like, what you Chappelle, what shut up, up, man! You flipping black golden retriever. It didn't hurt you, did it? Honestly, I love the guy, but was he Chappelle? Honestly, no. To, to be fair, let me retract that a bit. Chappelle outside of this show is actually lovely. 
You see him on other podcasts getting interviewed. You see him even on his show, which even though it's boring, he still comes across like a nice guy. But for whatever reason, when he was on this show, he was like, googie gaga, looking at flipping Brendan. My lips are so dry. Looking at Brendan like that, like, I don't, oh, get some backbone, bro. Well, real quick, right now. Dick on this table, real quick, right now. <laughs> so, but but then and then also after that, like now, I have pressure. I have offers from any big company you know to shoot another special. That's awesome. So, <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? This is you true. know what I'm saying. So it's like I don't, I don't know what we do. Damn. Yeah. You're a wise sage. Yeah. You're a wise sage. You're a Redacted, whatever. But fair enough. So David So still kept the same energy, to be fair, in some respect, because he was one of the only guests I've heard really grill Brendan in this regard. And to be fair to Brendan, he still answered the questions to his best ability. I just think he was wrong in certain places. My own opinion with it, personally. Um, but hey, what can you do? What can you do?